Hi everyone, and thanks for watching. So, two years ago, I made my video about this product, which is my Zeus horse knife with a 3D printed handle. Uh, but it's such an interesting piece, not just my design, but the history of this knife in general. So I thought let's do a bit of an in-depth video about it. So in this video I'll explain about this knife and how it was made and hand carved in the 18th century, 19th century, uh, and how I used the ID uh, and modern technology to make it into a modern version. And also show you how I'll make this modern version. But it's a really nice story about history, uh, modern technology and entrepreneurship. Uh, around 1800. Uh, people were, were starting to carry knives with decorated wooden handles that were hand carved and these were really intricate carvings. Um, it was for people a way to show their wealth. So rich farmers they would carry these knives all through the week and also uh, on Sunday to church which is why some of them have religious uh, carvings on them but they were mostly used on the land for cutting ropes and cutting, cut, cutting crops and for use with horses. So that's why uh, the horse knife became popular because it was an icon of wealth uh, and it lasted for almost a century. So this horse knife it's really area specific for this province in Zeeland where we live. So New Zealand, New Zealand the, the part where they took on the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings that's named after this province in the Netherlands, Zeeland. Uh, and we have this history with this knife. So when I talked with people three, four years ago, when I started making knives, everybody was asking me from, are, are you making like the horse knives? Which is more of a carving skill than a knife making skill. Um, and I said, no, I'm doing something different. But, you know, I was triggered by it because everybody knew what this was and that it was something historical. So right now there are only three or four people left who can make these knives carving, carving them by wood, uh, which is an awesome skill. It's really fascinating how they do it. Um, but I wasn't willing to dedicate my time on learning that skill. But when I saw the knife, I thought like, yeah, this, this, it's so, so perfect for 3D printing. Uh, and with it, my thought was, uh, if you now want to buy a, a horse knife because you like the aspect of the history of it, then you have to wait for a couple of years till someone finishes your knife. Um, so instead of learning the skill, I thought I'm going to try to make, it, make the, pro uh, the product popular again by uh, giving people a chance to buy it for, for less. And if they then really like it, then they can go and spend a lot of money and wait the time to have uh, the truly handmade piece. So my, I was always that it wasn't going to be a super exclusive or a super uh, high skilled product, but more of a semi mass production product uh, by which we could reintroduce a lot of people to this horse knife product. So I made a design couple of years ago and I made it in a 3D printer. Okay, and so this it. noisy beast of a machine is called a 3D printer and what it does is it uses these spools of filament which is plastic turned on a spool uh, and it lays it down uh, and it melts the plastic and it lays it down. So it's really kind of a high-tech technology and it's more and more accessible uh, and it allows you to print objects that you've designed and this is like in the main object I've designed and where this video is all about so the horse knife so let's take one of these and give it a bit of a in-depth review what the design is all about okay so this is the horse knife once it's uh, finished in the printer so the print was unfortunately busy with something else but I was I always have some of these in stock uh, and as you can see it's uh, like the shape of the traditional horse knife, but I was really cautious about not duplicating one Why because the real ones are made in wood and If you try to make something out of plastic That should look like wood then it's always 
yeah, it's 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 not, it's not real. So instead of making something that's not looking, that's not ever going to look real, I was uh, working on something more uh, modern, more uh, simple, stylish. Uh, and so I took a couple of subjects, uh, like the old subjects with dikes and the battle against water, and I took it into this new design. And here you can see the Eastern Shield uh, Storm Surge Barrier, which is actually the thing that keeps my house safe because we're three meters below sea level uh, and here you can see a couple of windmills put together with dikes in between to uh, pump out the water that we're you know it's part of our daily life here in the Netherlands here you can see the line with uh, the emblem of the, our province some uh, old style decorative work uh, and in the end you of uh, and on top you can see the horses so that's why it's actually called a horse knife because you have two horses on top feeding out of a feeding basket so it has the same look from a distance but if you look up close it's much more simple harder lines uh, yeah so it's it's not a one-on-one -on -one replica and it has some modern things like the eastern shell storm surge barrier was only completed in 1985 or something like that but it's on purpose because if you are trying to do a one-on-one -on -one replica it's something then you're trying to be the same and it's this is taking a general idea but trying to be something different welcome in my workshop so the next step is now we have the 3d printed handle it's the blade and I'm gonna be very honest I just buy it uh, there is a very good supplier and they're made in Solingen, so they're really nice high carbon steel. They're very, very sharp. And the people who make these knives still by hand, they, uh, they also use them. So I just use these knives and they're, they're perfect. This shiny metal part, which is the transition between the, the handle and the blade, and the blade of course. There is always a bit of rust on it, so I try to polish these up before I glue them together. So this is my 1950s Swiss made Sierra mill. And in the vise here I put the blade. Because these blades are forged, they're not always the same. So I have my horse knife handle, fits on a bit. Just to make it fit perfect, I'm gonna heat up the tank melt it inside here. Two days ago I glued up the handle of this horse knife and it wasn't the smoothest glue up but yeah, it, it worked well and it's stuck together now. And now I have to do the most important step of this knife. Well, one of the most traditional steps. Because if you see in here, you can see that this, this is a hollow cavity. Uh, and back in the day, they used to saw out these by hand. No Dremel tools, no end mills, etc. So they had to saw them out by hand. And then the real craftsmen, they were able to uh, leave a piece of wood inside of here. So. I now break mine loose because I just printed it and you can hear that it's shaking inside and these old craftsmen they used to do this by hand uh, not by steaming them out not by putting something else in no by hand leaving a perfectly round ball inside a cage like this that's very very impressive I think that's why they call it the sole of the knife and you know I eat it. I just printed it along and break it loose. But a knife like this, this it needs to have this sole, very special traditional part. I just did some oil on the blade because it's a carbon steel blade. It's very sharp and it will stay very sharp, but uh, it will rust on you if you don't maintain it. But it's just like the steels of old. And I put some oil on it, and then you'll have no problems. And then this will be. Now the finished product, you'll see the storm surge barrier and the, the mills. 
and the engraving and the sign of Zeeland. So and then the final part of this blade will be putting it in the sheath. So I have a very nice leather sheath I sell along with it. Uh, and otherwise it will be with a display stand where you can put it inside your living room or in a display or something like that. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any interest in this knife, there are 65 euros, which is around 72 dollars without a sheet. And the sheath is an extra 45 euros. But um, it's a very nice, nice to be uh, a very nice product to have for me. It's really traditional. There's a lot of history behind it. And as said before, I'm not trying to replace all those hand workers. But if those hand workers can only make four knives a year, uh, then and there are only four people, uh, four people left to make them, uh, then maybe this piece of history will go extinct, uh, and that would be a shame. So I hope by offering this product that. Uh, there will remain the interest and people will be maintained and uh, will stay engaged with this piece of history we have around here. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you it was a bit interesting. It was a lot of me blabbering around. But thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.